Uh, I have a slide today. Amen. Clap for me now. Somebody help me out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six slides. Yeah, I think it's good. Living above offense. Our text is Matthew chapter 16, verse 6. Luke chapter 17, verse 1 to 4. And Romans chapter 12, verse 14 to 21. By the way, how many of us still, in, you know, I still remember Pastor Funke's teaching last week. I was tremendously blessed. And I've decided to add one of our texts that she shared with us as our text today. Matthew 6, verse 11. That was the story of John the Baptist where Jesus said, um, is it the slide you want to project? Or... The Bible, I don't, yeah, thank you. You have to do the two. So I don't know how you want to partition your screen. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. That was Jesus' response to the disciples of John the Baptist who came to ask that she will still expect another Savior just because Brother John was in prison. Well, he was in prison maybe because of the unguardedness of his mouth. You know, he was a bold man who accused the king, Herod the Tetrarch, I think, of taking a wife that he wasn't supposed to take. And uh, his head was demanded. Amen. Uh, God decides the fate of everyone. I believe that was how John the Baptist was supposed to end his life. So while he was in prison, like Pastor Funkes read to us from Isaiah 61, he possibly remembered after two years that ah, they said the Savior will be able to open the prison door. So I may have been in prison. Uh, this man hasn't come. He did not even think that we are blood. As you would put it in the Yoruba language, oh, dear, rota jumobi. Like, she be we are, oh, rota je, you are my blood. Is that not enough? I, guy, do something. <laughs> I'm beginning to doubt you. And Jesus said, see, don't be offended. I have a different assignment. All right. Um, Luke chapter 17, verse 1 to 4. This is a text I believe everybody should know by heart. I must have said this text more than 20 times. Then he said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offense, offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that issue offend one of these little ones. Verse, verse 3, verse 4, Take it to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if you repent, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive. Now, let me talk to husband and wives here. I know that sometimes, uh, I don't know which of the pastors makes it difficult, but sometimes it looks like it's difficult to get something out, you know. We're asking, what is the matter? Nothing. What is the matter? Nothing. And the atmosphere will not, will not look like everything is okay. And the Bible is saying to us here that don't let us make it difficult. If there is a matter to be discussed, it does not have to linger for so long. And once the, right, the person has apologized, I think we should not stay on it for too long. That should just help us to stay at peace. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know which of the, whether, whether the wife that does that more or the husband that do, does that more because you can't tell because it's both ways. In some cases, in another case, it is the, I will not talk that one, but <laughs> the Lord help us. The Bible is saying that if somebody says, I am sorry, I am sorry. I am sorry. Now, I'm not talking about matters that requires a character improvement. Okay? You know, there are some matters in marriage that is a character error that either the man or the woman needs to work hard um, you, you cannot begin, you cannot continue to, do this, to commit the same offense five, seven times. It's, it shows something is wrong. 
Okay, one should not be foolish or stupid. You cannot still meet just hypothetically. Just like an example. You can't be, I can't still meet in your port first time. I am sorry. I came to your port the second time. I stole your meat again. The third time, I stole the meat. Ah uh ah. -uh. That's not good. That's being stupid. That means there is a problem that I need to address in my life. So, I just have to put a balance on that. Just so someone doesn't just go out here and say, eh, Pastor said if I do it seven times, you should be forgiven. I have to run. You won't even quote me now. You now quote the Bible. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Bible expects us to grow. And of course, from the text we read here, it's also important that Bible, God does not want us to be the, of, the offender. Because we read in the earlier text that woe to him who does the offense. It's better that person was not born. Okay. Uh, verse 5. Verse 5. And so when Jesus said to the disciples, I see, you must be, you must, you must be forgiven. Your heart must be large. You must be loving. It takes your loving heart to forgive, really. And uh, verse 5, please. And then the disciples are to say, you know what? We, I think we need another level of faith. I, I hope you cannot hear me. I think, and the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Uh, like we need, <laughs> we need ex a new level of grace to be able to do what you've asked us for. And there's another, part, there's, there's another part in the scripture when Peter was trying to perhaps refer to Jesus' words here. And Jesus said to him, I did not say to you seven times. I had said to you 70 by seven times. All right? Because Peter said, how many times should my brother offend me before I take a revenge? Seven times? Jesus said, no, it's actually more than that. In other words, it is, the, it, is the, it is you that have been offended that resolve the offense. If you do that, it makes forgiveness easy. So you will not be waiting for someone's apology before you move on with your life because you need not to be held down by offense. A number of people are being held down, they are in prison, right, because of unforgiveness. And so they are not doing what they're supposed to do, or perhaps they are not where they are supposed to be. Primarily, forgiving of an offense is setting yourself free so that you don't continue to feed on offense. I told you before that offense is a bait, is the Greek word for that is, is candelon. It's, it's a trap of the devil. And once you don't let go, you set yourself up for the devil. I pray that you will not fall into the devil's trap in Jesus' name. Now, the second slide. One of the marks of a true follower of Christ is the forgive, is forgiveness. There is an error there. Is forgiveness and living in peace as much as it depends on you, offenses will come assuredly and it must be met with the right response. That is, forgiving the offense, that is forgiveness, and living above that offense. Whatsoever you live above, in other words, you have the power above such you have to be able to forgive so that you can live above offense. And by living above offense, you are living above the trap of the devil. Amen. The danger of offenses, truly, it is hurting and it creates a wound. Which is, I had said to us in this teaching that one of the ways that we can begin to heal from the wound, from the hurt of offense is when we quickly let it go. When you quickly release it and you release it to God to say, you know what, God, having a sincere conversation with God, you know what, God, I am sincerely hurt by this person's demeanor towards me. 
It's really hurting. But I, I, I'm letting it go, and I need you to heal me. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 18 to 19. Proverbs 25, 18 to 19. Screen us. What's going on? Is anybody there? Okay, thank you. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow. Confidence in an unfaithful man. Now let's go to the let's go to verse 18. This is just a, this is just a scenario. Something that can get us offended. Like someone bearing false witness against you. The Bible already established here that anybody who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a club and a sword and a sharp arrow. The truth, the sincere truth, is that, I mean, this is the scenario of someone who bears a false witness. How many of us have been lied against before? Like, like you, 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 like, shocked, right? right? That's, a, that's a scenario of, an, that's just an example of an offense that, that could come. Betrayal is one of it. Uh, husband betraying wife, wife betraying husband, children betraying their parents, friends betraying one another. I mean, offense could come in diverse ways, but this is one. And this is just to establish to you that it can be hurting, really. And it's a wound. He said it's like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow. The second type of offense, verse 19, out of a number of offenses that can never happen to a human being, is when you put confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble, is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joints. How many of us are hard to trust people before? Like, you'd have, it is after putting so much trust in that fellow that you realize that this person is so unreliable. Maybe you ask somebody, somebody to do something for you. Almost like a matter of life and death. Almost like a matter of destiny. A typical example of putting confidence in an unfaithful man. A typical example is in, could be in marriage when you put your trust in your spouse. And you, this is how you feel. If, in fact, TPT says it's like, it's like when you put, it's like when you, it's like when you, when you take a bite with a tooth that has abscess. When you put confidence in a friend, maybe you had a business, maybe you've done a business dealing. I'm letting you know that so that we don't be in the situation with other people. And I sincerely pray for anyone that I've gone through betrayal. You know, maybe you're listening online or wherever you might be, that the Lord is going to heal you and make it up to you. Because it can really be painful. And so we must always practice the golden rule. Don't do to others what you, don't, what you cannot take. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a man, it's like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint, like a broken ankle that you are walking on. How many of us have had a twisted ankle before, a broken bone? Playing soccer, I, I, I had quite a few. Not, I didn't, I've never broken bone before, but I, I've twisted my ankle a couple of times. The one that can be most painful is when you twist your, your toe. Oh God, you still play soccer with it two days after the but carefully. Offense can lead to bitterness and resentment. It can lead to bitterness and resentment. And that's, that, that is exactly what will happen when we don't really forgive especially when people are very close to us. Especially if the offense is coming from someone that is close, like a family. If you don't quickly release it, it can lead to bitterness and resentment. Uh, let's look at this story of story in the book of 2 Samuel 
2 Samuel chapter 22. And Absalom spoke to his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamar. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had ship sharer in Baal, Hazor, which is near Ephraim. So Absalom invited all the kings. Now, before you go further, because I want us to read that story a bit more. This story was a story of, uh, of, of this was David's son, one of his sons, Absalom, uh, uh, and Hanum, Amnon, and Amnon, right? Uh, Amnon, 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 brother Amnon. Anon, Anon, Amon, which one is Amon, Brother Amon. <laughs> Whichever way. Which I understand. He had, it, she, it took the innocence of his sister. Now, Go back to that story because I want to highlight something. To the beginning of the story, I, didn't, I think start from maybe verse 10. Now, he was so obsessed with his own sister and he pretended to be sick and he requested that she should come and serve her specially. And I, and I just thought about it for him. And I, how can David not just fura? How can somebody be just asking for... She, he said, let her come and cook for me. I want to watch her cook. <laughs> mm. You see, you can see the process. See him before, before the doing. He, 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 he allowed the, the, the lost to be, he fed the lost, he fed his heart with the lost. So he had already done it before he committed it. I want to watch her cook. Then I don't say to bring the food into the bedroom that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them to... He, she did not make the cake in unknown, uh, unknown absence. Right? is very before. What was he really looking at? He really never loved her sister. It was just lost. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them to Amnon. Our brother in the bedroom, let's go. Now, when she had brought them to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come lie with me, my sister. But she answered, Now, I'm going to just stop here and then, okay, no. I'll read a bit further. But she answered him, No, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing should be done in Israel. Do not do this disgraceful thing. And hi. Where could I take my shame? And as for you, where would you like one of the fools? You would be like one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not be told me from you. Stop there. In other words, he could have had his sister as a wife, even though that doesn't happen now. But because he had fed his heart with so much lust, he could not delay. He was not listening. He could not hear what his sister was saying to him. Because he had fed his soul with so much lust that, he, that had defiled a sense of right judgment. And that's, that happened to a lot of people. That it has to be now. I have to do it now. If I don't do it, I'm going to die. We must learn to delay gratification. It does not have to be now. If you can delay your gratification, your error margin will be less. If you can delay your gratification, you will possibly save more for the future. Who says you have to buy that shoe this year? 
Who says you have to buy that cloth this year? Who says you have to buy that wristwatch this year? Who says you have to buy that gold wrist this year? Now, now that you could not delay your gratification and you have bought it, and so what has happened? He could just have had, he could just have had, had, a, had his sister, fine, and, and nothing, and he would not have done anything wrong. But he didn't listen. He did not consider the consequences of his actions before because he could not delay his gratification. Young men, young boys and girls, it doesn't have to be now. Now go back to where we stopped before we started this Brother Anom beginning. I think verses 3 or so. Is that where we were? Okay, thank you. And Absalom spoke to his brother. So, Absalom, you see, this Absalom and his sister, they were children of a foreign wife oh, that David, in fact, their mother was a pagan. But that's another story for another day. David, by himself, used his own hand to invite trouble into his own life. But we are not going there. For Absalom hated Amnon. Absalom was Tamar's brother because he had forced his sister Tamar. And it, bring, and it came to pass after two full years that Amnon had shipped, shipped something in Baal Hazor, Hazor, which is near Ephraim. So Absalom invited all the king's sons. Then Absalom came to the king and said, Kindly note that your servant has sheep shearers. Please let the king and his servant go with your servant. But the king said to Absalom, No, my son, let us not all go now. Let us not go. I don't know. Let's be a burden to you. Let's be a burden to you. Then he hodged him. Then he hodged him, but he will not go. And he blessed him. Then Absalom said, If not, please let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said to him, Why should he go with you? But Absalom urged him, so he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded the servant, saying, Watch now, when Amnon had his merry with wine, all you people who like to drink, say, You should be drinking, it's not a sin. There's no, I mean, nothing says I cannot drink in the. All you people who quote that, that I can drink as I like. Kings are not meant for wine because king, wine in itself, Wine, 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 wine. Alcohol is, 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 can make you think funny. Come to think about it. Have you seen a, a full grown man before? And he sees a, a drain, a drain, and he says, ah, ah, this is, this bed is well laid. Just jump into it and just, you know, when he wakes up, you know, how did I get here? Some people have signed their life away because they were drunk. There is no one, I've not met anyone, who drinks alcohol and he has never been, he has never drank excess before. Have you met any? There will be one day. One day you will break that record. It's just a matter of time. I can control myself. Eh? So when Amnon's heart is merry, drink, give wine to him who is about to perish. <laughs> oh God. And when, when I say to you, strike Amnon, then kill him. I'm sure if I said Drak and we just like, what are these people saying? They want to strike me. I did thunder. Thunder wants to because he's already drunk. <laughs> oh. Do not be afraid. Have I not commanded you be courageous and valiant? So they killed him. Now, let's go back to our slide. He, 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 he could not forgive his brother. Of course, not his fault. He had to do that. He had to take that law into his hands because um, David, who was the father, did not correct. He didn't speak about what Amnon did. And the brother became bitter. Unforgiveness leads to bitterness and resentment. He resented his brother because he could not forgive 
his brother of the offense they committed against his sister. He forgot that they were their families. That's Hebrews 12, 15. Are you checking my time? Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Let, lest any root of bitterness springing up, be, springing up cause. Hey, give me an IV. My, my brain is trying to understand this one. Uh, See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Offense destroy relationships. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 22. If, especially if it's not forgiven. That's why you cannot offend people. That's why you will try not to... Try, try your best on the grace. An angry man stirs up, stirs up strife and a furious man abounds in transgression. Nobody wants to have dealings with this kind of a person. And this kind of a person obviously would destroy his relationship or relationships as it were because you're always angry. You're short-fused. You take offense from everything. And we could see how the relationship of Joseph and his brothers were destroyed in a way. Uh, they took offense. They took offense because Joseph shared his dreams with them. And how in their heart, how can you be greater than all of us? Is it only you? Ah, we still have more. Okay. Now, forgiveness, embedded in forgiveness as is certain powers. And one of it is that forgiveness brings freedom. Romans chapter 12, verse 14 to 21. Bless those who persecute you and do and bless, pardon me, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things. But associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no evil. No one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. When you don't forgive, you are simply putting yourself in the place of God. I have the power to avenge myself. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Now, the coal of fire here is not the literally coal. So you will not deliberately be doing good just because you feel that person is being punished when you do that good. What, you are, what this is saying, saying to you is simply is that your act of love will become uh, something that stirs uh, some fire in that person's heart towards repentance. Your act of love, the person will begin to wonder, ah, but I abused Tolani yesterday. Yes, today, yet, yet again, she greeted me this morning. What kind of human being is this one? I haven't told her she's good for nothing. I haven't told her that I don't even understand why she's, 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 she's in this company. Yet, when she, re, when she came to the office this morning, she said to me, good morning. In fact, she brought me a gift. And even though I rejected it, yeah, because I don't know whether she put poison inside. But the truth is this. Your act of kindness begins to stir something within the heart of such fellow. 
and it will just a matter of it is just a matter of time before the person realizes wait what kind of person is this as she's full of love despite all that I have done that's what the Bible is saying here it's not a heap of fire to burn that person and watch that person <laughs> char or turn dark under the fire of heaven. You know, some people even use this quote to pray. Almighty oh, God, I say, I feed him today. He has eaten my pepper and my oil. <laughs> Let that pepper turn to fire. Fire him, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, fire. Fire. Fire, even if you, you bought that person a bottle of water, the water he drank, Lord, fire, fire inside his heart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For your word said, feed your enemy. Give him a drink. I've done, I've done that. Because I have obeyed you. <laughs> because I have obeyed your word. Your word commanded me to give my enemy food. I have done it. That food must turn to poison. He must not wake up tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure God will just be just doing like this. He's just telling Gabriel, Gabriel, look at this girl. She has not, she has not changed. Ah, I hope she grows. That my dealings with God, with people, is a dealing of love and grace. No, God doesn't want anything not to die. If he, didn't, if he didn't want you and I to die, why do you think he would want any other person to die because you don't like that person? In fact, sometimes you might just, you might, you, it might just be your assumption, I think, that, that, that has made the person look bad. The person might not actually be bad. In fact, God might position that person in your life to reveal a character about you that needs to be better. So instead of enduring your temptation so you can pass, you are busy praying fire to come down. Over who? My enemy fall down now. Your enemy is not actually a human being. Amen. Amen. So, the person that you pray to for them, that just is the person who screw up past your door the following day. Maybe in the latest Mercedes Benz. And then you wonder, ah, hey, 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 Forgiveness reflects God's character. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Forgiveness reflects God's character. Oh, time up. Forgiveness reflects God's character. Therefore, if you're in... Um, you're too fast for me. And be kind to one another... Tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has done what? I told you that forgiveness is a reflection of, of God's character in you. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Don't you know that sometimes the person that has offended you who has apologized is hoping and praying that you let go of his offense? Amen. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, 20, 15 to 21. I love this story so much. Joseph's brother have passed. Joseph's father have passed, really. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will eat us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph saying, before your father died, he commanded saying, thus you shall say to, you, to Joseph, I beg you, Please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now, please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. You know that he already told them that he has forgiven them, but they didn't believe because they did too much. I mean, they did quite evil to him. They sold him. You know, <laughs> they, then, then, then they wanted to kill him. And then they said, oh, we'll sell you. You know, 
Then his brother also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to, said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am in the place. For am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it, as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, stop there. Is the Bible saying to us here that Joseph had to go through that experience so that God could save many people? Absolutely yes. Because Joseph's journey to Egypt was unpalatable, was a difficult one. He was, in, he was sold. From there, he went to uh, the Potiphar's house. He was lied against. From there, he was in prison, forgotten. Even though he met someone who like, help me when you go out, the person all forgot two years after. But a famine was coming. Perhaps you couldn't have known the nation called Israel today. They would have been killed by famine. So absolutely, Joseph, so sometimes, could it be that the things we go through is for, is for the agenda of God? For a greater gain to his kingdom? Maybe, maybe. We may not understand, but when the time comes, we surely will do. He understood that. But for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Somebody needs this kind of grace. Forgiveness is a reflection of God's character in your life. So all the habit of me, Nibas or Molaylai, that I will never speak to this person again in my life. I will never have anything to do with this evil person again in my life. When you still have the privilege of life that is not even yours. Amen. Where are we? And now, living above offense. Practice self reflection. Pastor Fogel spoke about this last week a bit. Practice self-reflection. Matthew 2, 3 to 5. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eyes but do not consider the plank in your own eye? I can you see well when you have speck. The person that you think has offended you might not have offended you. You are not just seeing it. Because the log in your eyes cannot make you see well. So when you remove the log, you will see well. Reflect. What is it about? Is it such a serious matter? I, I hope I'm not the one that has overreacted. All right? Practice self-reflection. Choose to let go. 17 verse 3 to 4. Choose to let go. Let the offense go. Take it to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. Choose to let go for the sake of your own peace. Pray for those who offend you. Who offend you? Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Matthew 5, 44. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. My boss used me. My office used me. Yeah, well, pray for them. Let the Lord reward you. And then show kindness and compassion. Show kindness and compassion. Show kindness and compassion. Romans 12, for, for vengeance is mine, be kind and all of that. And then the last slide, living above offense requires humility. Humility it requires grace. It requires forgiveness and love. Oh, somebody tell him that you love me. Put your hands together. 
and praise the Lord. Ah, you're not holding somebody. Hold somebody. Tell him that you love him. Oh, put your hands together and pray. Forgiveness. Living above offense requires humility. Like, I'm, just on, I'm also under the grace of God. It is the grace of God that has saved all of us. I will not think of myself highly than I ought to. I wouldn't put myself in the position of God by not forgiving. You have to be graceful from, for the grace you have received given to others. You have received forgiveness and then uh, love, love work, love work, love work. By this man, we know that you are my disciples. When you do what? When ye have love, finish it now. This is Bible class. By these men, we know that you are my disciples when you have love. Can we say that again? By these men, we know that you are Jesus' It's not my disciple, Lord. That, that Jesus is, that you are Jesus' disciples when you have love for one another. And the Bible says that if you see your brother in need, 1 John 3, 16. Not John 3, 16. No. 1 John 3, 16. Uh, when you see your brother in need and you shut your heart, how can you say that you have the love of Christ inside you? Thank you for listening. I hope you have been blessed. God bless you. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah.